So Roblox has released the Party API, and it basically just utilizes the Party feature and allows game developers to have more control over the parties of players that join the game. We have new party data as well as a new property for the player called Party ID, which for example allows for a player being able to teleport to the party within a different place in the experience, or for example making everyone spawn together. So yeah, overall it's a pretty neat feature, and I'm going to be overviewing it in this video. So as usual, leave a like and subscribe to support the channel, and let's just get to it. And here we are in Roblox Studio. And and the first information that I actually need to give you guys is that you cannot really test this API in Roblox Studio right now. So I'm going to be testing this in a live game. But also I'm going to be overviewing the dev forum post later and you can basically just check if anything has changed by then. But anyway, right now if I were to add a script into the server script service for example, first thing I would need to talk about is going to be the property for the player in a party. Where if I were to actually just write a quick script with the player service and then make a local function to check for party. From the player which is going to be the player instance and this is going to be the function which is actually just going to check if the player is within a party and i can simply just do if player.partyid which is this new property from right here that's a unique identifier of the party a player belongs to so if i were to check if this id is going to be different than an empty string then i can simply just do a little print to say that player is is in a party and then just print out the player that party id and else i can simply just print out that the player or there should be actually that name so let me fix that is not in party and i can simply just do this either on doing player service that player added connect a function from the player and simply just do the check for party and then the player but this is only going to check if the player is in a party whenever they for example just join the game but to actually just showcase the party feature a little bit more i'm going to be adding a part into the workspace and make a reference to it in the script. And then I can do part that touch, then connect a function from the hit part and do local player is equal to the player service, get player from character, the part that parent, and then do if player then I'm going to be checking for the party again. So if I were to actually do the playtest in studio, it's just going to print out that I am not in a party since I'm not really able to use the party feature from right here. So again, I'm going to be showing this in a live game right now. So well, here I am. And again, if I open the console, go to the server, this is going to print out that that I am not in a party. And the same thing is going to happen if I step on the brick. But how do I actually add someone to a party now? Well, and this is as simple as going to the party feature from up here and pressing on this start party button, where I'm just going to add a few of my friends in and then I'm going to be in the party with them. Where if I were to actually view the party, yeah, that's going to be the chat window, but I basically just created the party from right here, right? And right now, if I were to actually step on the brick again, this is going to print out that I am in a party with this party ID. So yeah, that's basically the utilization of this property, but there is a little bit more stuff that you can actually do. There are going to be two new methods that I can actually use, and they are going to come from the social service, which I get by game get service and the social service. And right here in this check for party function, the first thing that I'm going to get are going to be the players in party, which is equal to social service, and then use the first method, which is going to be get players from, or rather get players by party ID, and then provide this ID from right here. Now if I were to actually just do a for loop for index and the player from party in players in party and then print out the player from party, this is just going to print out every single player that's in my party. So now if I publish this game to Roblox, then do another playtest and actually open the console, go to the server. For some reason it's telling me that I am not in a party and hold on a minute. But that's because I need to start a party from right here, so hold on. Okay, so I needed to actually just reset it. So yeah, here it's saying that I am in a party again and right now it's only printing me because these two haven't accepted. And right here it's only saying that one person is active, which is, well, me. <laughs> but yeah, I don't think my friends are available anymore, so yeah. This is basically how this method is going to work. So that's how you get all of the players that are in a party. And now going back to Roblox Studio again, there is going to be yet another method where I'm just going to comment all of this out and tell you that we can actually get different party data from this party ID right here. And this one we actually need to do for AP call by doing local success party data is equal to the pickle function which is going to return the social service and then the get party async from right here. Now this one is going to return an array of dictionaries containing data for all the members of the specified party who are currently in the experience. So if I were to do this one, provide the party ID, if success, 
and party data, then I can just do a for loop, index then the member data in the party data do. And then I'm gonna need to do a little bit of black magic right here to actually format the string since if you were to print out the member data, this is just going to give you the ID of the table and not the actual data in game. And since this is a dictionary, it's going to be a bit complicating. So again, hold on. Okay, this should work. So right here we get data per party member, which is going to consist of these keys that are going to be the user ID, place ID, job ID, and the private server ID, if they are in one, and the access code to the reserved server, if again they are in it. Now again, you won't need to actually format this the same way I did, since this one is only made like this to display all of the data in a live game. So again, if I were to publish this one to Roblox and do yet another playtest and then just open the console again, go to the server, I'm going to have all of the data right here. So I'm going to have the user ID, which is my user ID, the place ID, which is hold on, the actual ID of the place that I am in, and my job ID. Private server and the reserved server are going to be nil since this is a normal server and not any like teleport service one. And someone might also ask why is it really that important? Well, this party data in particular with the private server ID and the reserved server access code is going to allow the user to teleport to their friends if they are for example in a game that they started. So if you are playing for example, I don't know, Dandy War, Dusty Trip, you know how there are these teleporters in the game, right? Once you get in, you have to restart the round to actually play with friends, but with the developer having the access to this, they can just make some logic to actually allow you to, well, join them. But I'm going to be giving more information about this on the dev forum post, so let's actually just go to there. And right here we have the party API is here, the forum post, where Airblocks have been saying that they basically shared this vision of this feature last year at RDC, and now they are excited to basically announce it. And we understand that previous challenges of ensuring party members can seamlessly play, spawn, and navigate your experience together. This API directly addresses the frustration scenarios, like party members members spawning apart or being split between teams or places. So yeah, if you wanted to, you could even put everyone from the same party into the same team, and this is going to be better for users if they actually play together. But continuing, while party has already made it easier for users to join an experience together with people they know through features like join with party, the party API builds on this providing you with the party data of users who play together. And this is again basically someone joining the game, you're getting the party ID and then using a method from the API to for example see every player from that party. And here I have a few examples of, for example, keeping parties together by ensuring that party members spawn in the same location, maintaining their social togetherness. Bro, it's not that deep. Anyway, I'm just going to play this preview for you guys and actually zoom it a little bit in. So right here you have a player who didn't join into the party, who is actually able to see all of the party members from the party data, where they also have an option to join them. And if they actually do that, As you can see, this user is going to spawn with all of them. And then we have the create exclusive party experiences, where you can design unique inexperience benefits, challenges or visual elements for users who are in a party. So if I were to play this preview right here, you can basically just see that something is going to happen when all of the party members are just going to go into this area with the chest. But now, there is the enhanced team-based gameplay, and this is the point that I made about the matchmaking, where you can just put everyone into the same team. And you can also match similar sized parties against each other, for of course balanced competition. And it made me think if you can actually maybe use this to for example know if someone might be teaming in game or not. <laughs> but moving to how to integrate party API paragraph. And to put it shortly since you already know it, I as I have shown this in my video, there is a new property for the player called party ID. And with this one you can basically just see if someone is in a party or not. And once you get the party ID, you can actually utilize it in different methods. Like this one with social service, get players by party ID. Where this method right here is returning a table of players who are in a party. And then the get party async from party ID. And this is what actually returns the party data, which is an array of the party member data that's associated with the party ID. An important thing to note is that the return party data reflects the current state of the party across all active server instances within the experience. And this array is ordered by the time each party member accepts the party invite. And this means that the first person in the array is the earliest one to accept, and the last one is the most recent. But wait, shouldn't this one be the party owner, the person who created the party maybe? 
I don't really know, maybe like the person who created the party is like in the middle or somewhere. Anyway, you will see an error message if the provided party ID is not a valid GUID. And make sure that the party ID player property is not equal to an empty string to avoid this error. And here we have the party member data, which has the key, the type of the entry and the description. Where user ID is just the ID of the user, place ID is the place that the party member is currently in, job ID, which is the job ID of the game server instance that the that the user is currently in too, and the private server ID, which is an optional parameter, which is returned if the member is in a private or a reserved server. And of course, to actually access the reserved server, you need the reserved server access code. And these two keys right here are going to be familiar to you if you, for example, use teleport service. So yeah. Then we have an example of the get party async method, which is basically just getting the party ID, and then it prints out the party member data from the party data that's returned by the social service method, and it's basically printing out the user place job, the reserved server and the access code. Then we have the how to test and this is basically what I mentioned at the beginning, which is that you cannot test it in Roblox Studio right now. But make sure to check the dev forum post, because this might be different by the time you are watching this video. And then start building with the party API, where you basically just have links to these different methods and the property. And you can also share the feedback under this dev forum post. And also, if you have any bugs or problems, it's best to see if anyone right here in the replies also had the same problem and if there is a solution already and if not you can actually just reply to the post and send the feedback to roblox on the problem or the bug but yeah that's going to be everything for the dev forum too and yeah that's going to be everything for this video too so as usual leave a like and subscribe for the channel again go check out my patreon page and thanks everyone for watching hope you had a nice day and see ya guys